So a large part of implementing DevOps is all about introducing efficiencies into the existing workflow. It's a lot like working out, you know, you've got to have a plan, you've got to have the right resources, and you need the ability to adapt whenever change occurs. It also has to integrate into your existing daily habits, or it's not going to be something you're going to stick with for the long term. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I use Docker Compose to create environments for developers that make it fast and easy to get up and running with environments that mimic production. While we're doing so, we're going to be using Docker as well as Node.js, Postgres, and Elasticsearch. So one of the first things you need is a suitable work environment, and I'm not actually referring to your office space this time, but your editor. I want to be showing you how to use JetBrains WebStorm instead of VS Code because you got to stop hating yourself and treating yourself like that when you use VS Code. So we're going to use WebStorm for that. And uh, remember, friends don't let friends use VS Code. So I've completely wiped out my environment. And we're going to see exactly what this looks like whenever a brand new user starts from scratch. Okay, so if we take a look at our readme file here, it says to launch the environment, just type makeup. And since I'm using WebStorm here, I don't even have to type makeup. I can just come over here, click the little green play arrow, and it's going to bring the environment up for me. All right, so we can see here that our process finished with exit code zero. That's a good thing. That means it was successful. And if I come down to the services tab here, I've got my Docker environment for the logging example and I've got all of the different containers that are required by this application, right? And remember, as a developer, I may not have known what any of these were or known that they were needed. One thing I can do, though, is I can go click on the container itself. For example, this is the ExpressJS API application, and I can see the logs from this, and I can see that it's connected to the database, and one of the other things I've got built into this is this request folder with a file called api.http, which is basically like a way to run uh, against the endpoints and pull the data from the endpoints. So now I don't need Postman for hitting API endpoints. I've just got it right here in the same app that I'm already working in. So I'll click this, run it with the dev environment, and I got the local host failed to respond. So let's come back over here to my logs for the Docker container. And I've got a DB error. The relation users does not exist. So I can come back over to my readme here. And it says to seed my database environment, I use the make migrate command. So let's go do that. And I'm intentionally like not reading the entire sentence, right? Because that's exactly how it's going to work in the real world. So let's run make migrate. And that finished with exit code zero. And let me show you that real quick. So one of the things that happens with this make migrate is we're actually running a Docker exec command. So we're saying use the Docker command exec the following command inside the express.js container. So if you remember in my running Docker containers, I've got a container called express.js. And then we're going to run the command dot whack node modules dot bin connects migrate latest. All right, so now that's doing a couple things for us. Um, migrate latest is an argument for the connects command that just runs the database migrations specified here in the database folder. That's kind of a, just a database thing, not really relevant to this video. But um, the other thing that's going on here is we need this connects command, but as a new developer, I may not have that installed on my system. So if I had to go find out what that thing was, get it installed, maybe it has some configuration stuff, all of that kind of stuff, We've bypassed all of that and we're just doing it inside of the Docker container and it's been installed in the node modules.bin directory. And so we can just specify that path and now anyone can run this whether or not they have connects installed on their system, right? Makes a really nice user experience. 
When we run a command, we get a response code 200 of OK, and we just get an empty array back as the response, which, OK, that's cool. That means it works, but any developer who's working on this is going to need some data to work with, right? So we could have them make that for themselves. Who knows if they would get it right? You would have to understand a lot about the data model and the data that you need in order to do that, which just adds to time and complexity to getting a developer up and running. So if we come back over to, actually if we go over to our readme here, there's the next sentence here that says run make seed to populate the database with test data. So jump back over to our make file, come down here, we've got the seed command, we'll run that. That successfully ran with an exit code zero. So now if we come back over here, we'll run our command again and look at that. We get the response back, we get all of our response headers, and then we get the array of data with the seed data that was generated from this seed file right here in our application. Just like I did with the migrate file, the seed data runs the connects command inside of the Docker container, so there's no dependencies for the user to have installed on their local workstation. Now here's one other thing that I really like about this whole setup, and that's the ability to do debugging. So I'm gonna set a breakpoint right here by clicking in that column. And then from my drop down menu here, I'm gonna select debug API, then click my debug icon, that opens up my debug panel down here. I can see that the debugger is connected. So now come back over to my API request again. I'm gonna run that with the dev environment. So you can see it hit the breakpoint here, toggled that green, it stopped the program execution, and then it's given me some nice little IntelliSense, tool tips, hints, I don't know what you really wanna call them here, but basically I can inspect the variables in the application. In this case, I can inspect the value of the user's variable, which is the result of our database query. Now that makes troubleshooting really, really easy because you don't have to type console.log and run your application anymore and do some ghetto third class debug attempt to figure out what's going on in your application. It's just built into our editor here. Once I'm happy with what I see here, I can click the resume button and then I can jump back over to the services tab and see the results of our API endpoint. I'm gonna show you one other thing about WebStorm here and believe it or not, this video is not sponsored by WebStorm. It's just a tool that I really, really like and I just don't think there's anything that compares to it out there. I've got a database console built into this so I can jump to a query console over here and then I'm just connected to my database so I can run I can run queries from right within my editor so if I'm not seeing the database results that I was expecting to see from within my application I can validate that those exist in the database or that the database data is what I was expecting and then just make my future decisions based on what I learned from that exercise. And with that out of the way, I can get back to doing what I do best. And it really wasn't that hard, right? I mean, we were looking at what, like 10 minutes approximately from the time whenever I started up the environment until we were pulling back data from the database. And so granted, there was some tribal knowledge that was involved there. For example, I knew that the code had already been written to create the seed data for the database and the database migration stuff was there, which, you're probably gonna have some database migration stuff in your application already. You may not have seed data, so you're gonna have to work at that. And then I also had like a general understanding of how the application worked and what the application did. So if you don't have that, you're gonna have to learn that as well. But the trade-off is worth it because you can learn it once, build out a platform or a workflow system like this, and then every developer in the future doesn't have to learn that just as a prerequisite to getting started. So now eventually they'll gain that information, but it's not something that they have to try to, you know, 
digest on day one of their career or their job with your company and with your team. So if you wanna take a look at the code, because I went through it kind of quick here, I will put a link to the repo containing that code in the description down below. And then I'm not gonna badger you about, you know, liking the video, subscribing and all that, do what you wanna do, do what's best for you. But I will say, if you like and comment on the videos, it does help me know what content y'all are finding valuable and kind of steer me into the directions for the future videos that I make. But I'm not going to harass you about that. I've got a cold beer to drink, and uh, I'll see y'all in the next video.